Here we're going to extend our discussion of a 2D rigid rotator, rotation of a particle on a string, into three dimensions. Here uh, we'd probably best described as a particle on a sphere. So the distance from the origin to the particle uh, r, that distance remains constant, but um, it's free to move around the surface of a sphere. Now what we want to do to consider this is to transform into from Cartesian coordinates into spherical coordinates. In the 2D case we considered, we transformed from Cartesian coordinates into um, polar coordinates and we found that the resulting uh, Schrodinger equation was uh, fairly simple. Here we're going to do the ana analog into three dimensions, go into spherical coordinates. All right, so let's see what we're talking about here. Let's draw a picture. Here's our Cartesian coordinate system. Let's make this the x, the y, and the z axis. And let's take an arbitrary vector going from the origin out here. And to get the um, coordinates, the Cartesian coordinates, we'll project that onto the z axis. This will have coordinates x, y, and z. Now we'll now project this down into the plane so we can draw another vector coming out here. If we project this on the y-axis, we'll get the y-coordinate and project this along the x-axis, we'll get the x-coordinate. So that's x, y, z Cartesian coordinates. What we want to do is to transform those coordinates into three spherical coordinates, r, theta, and phi. So r will be the distance from the origin to the particular point we're interested in. Theta will be the angle between the z-axis and the vector. And phi will be the angle between the x-axis and the projection of that vector on the xy plane. So those are the definitions of the Cartesian coordinate. Now for uh, rigid rotation on a sphere, uh, a rigid rotation in 3D. Uh, rigid means we have R as a constant. So uh, this will be a constant. So the only two independent variables we have are theta and phi. So theta is this angle and phi is the angle about the z-axis. All right, so uh, you may, um, so this is to specify the location of a particular point on a sphere and these uh, coordinates theta and phi these are GPS coordinates so if you think of the earth as a sphere constant radius a sphere any point on earth can be represented in terms of two angles if you have your phone you get GPS coordinates those are two angles the two angles are this theta angle and the phi angle Actually, what's measured is the angle relative to the equator. So if this is the equator here in the xy plane and z is the north pole and minus z is the south pole, well, you measure relative to the uh, line drawn here. This would be going up this way, be positive 90. Going down here would be negative 90. And then going around this way, it's relative, if this is the um, plane that goes through the Earth through Greenwich, then this will be angle uh, uh, plus 180 from there or minus 180 from there. But basically, <laughs> I'm not getting into any more detail, uh, GPS coordinates give you the position on a, um, a surface, on the surface of the Earth, and those are spherical coordinates, so we're already familiar with some of those. All right, so what we want to do is to write Schrodinger's equation, h psi equal e psi, where h now is going to be expressed in terms of spherical coordinates. So here is h expressed in terms of spherical coordinates. This again, we're looking at angular momentum. This is very similar to what we had for the 2D case. It's minus, minus h bar squared over 2i. And here is the um, derivative parts. Here we have the derivative with respect to theta and the derivative with respect to phi. And this um, uh, s sort of somewhat more complicated uh, expression has to do with our coordinate transformation. So for instance, x, let's see, r sine theta cosine 
phi. I think that's it. And y is equal to r sine theta uh, sine phi. And z will just be r cosine of theta. So when you transform, now you want to uh, transform dx, dy, dz into dr, d theta, and d phi. When you do those transforms, you get things like cotangent and 1 over sine squared theta and so on. But anyway, there's the Hamiltonian. And uh, what we have to do is to solve the Schrodinger equation using this Hamiltonian and see what uh, eigenfunctions and eigenvectors we get out of that.